Hi, um, Susan Norwell here with Grid3 and Snapcore Tricks. And I can't tell you, there's like nothing much better to me. Well, there's a lot of things better, but I love when I learn something new. And sometimes I learn something new from somebody else, uh, which in this case was the Snapcore trick. Um, but then sometimes I figure something out playing around that I didn't know that was there. So that's the Grid3 trick which kind of led to this whole idea of looking at access methods. So just to lay the groundwork here, before I start to show you how to do these various things, I do think there are some eye gaze challenges for our kiddos and adults that we work with. Um, it is not uncommon for individuals with Rett syndrome to have visual processing issues ranging from CVI, cortical visual impairment, to mild processing issues. And when I say processing, visual processing issues, I don't mean visual acuity. I don't mean things that you can correct with glasses. I mean that the way the messages get to the brain, the brain receives those messages, is able to understand and process them and then spit them back, um, can be um, difficult for some individuals with threat. I service some kids, I have some kids I work with, um, who do have CVI. Um, and I have some other kiddos I work with that present with mild visual processing issues. They just, um, they don't stay with visual tasks very long. You can see the difference. The kids that, um, though you put a device in front of them and they are like on it, like they are looking and they're checking it out. And then you have other kids that would much rather look at you, not really look at the device. It's a challenge to get them to engage with it. And you know, everybody thinks that getting the device is just gonna be like putting on a pair of glasses and it's just gonna be a-okay. But you know, there's a range of how individuals with RET take to the eye gaze device. And I don't really want anybody feeling guilty if their kiddo doesn't quite glomp onto it like they're seeing posted all over the place on Facebook because there are some challenges and we can help those challenges. Then we've got just plain old visual attending. You know, maybe they're not the best visual attenders. Maybe they are much more auditory in how they listen. So you see this kind of scattered attending, you know, like they're they're looking at one point and they're not looking at another or fleeting, like they just kind of do a drive-by of the device, which makes it really hard when you're modeling to get them to attend to the modeling. Mix that in with attending in general. Like some of our kiddos are in a wheelchair. They don't do much movement without somebody moving them. I find them to have more of a visual attending um, proclivity. Ooh, that's a nice big word, isn't it? Because, or, or a tendency to, to attend better to visual tasks because they have less other distractions. They can't move away from the device. They can't go waving their arms over their head. They can't go, they can't go, um, um, pushing things over. I mean, there's just a whole lot of attending uh, issues that are out there. And I do think that our girls and boys that walk, aka sometimes run, um, that that movement, those movement patterns are as affected by apraxia as the kids who can't move. In other words, apraxia is a two-way, you know, it's a door that swings two ways. I can't start something because of my apraxia. Initiation is hard. Or once I've started something, I can't stop it. You know, that hand ringing, once it starts, do you think maybe they would like to stop it? Sure, because it doesn't feel good on their skin after a while. They get skin breakdown. They get contractures. It's not a pleasant feeling, and yet they are powerless to stop it because apraxia swings both ways. So when we look at all those things, we can't exactly have a one fits all set up to a device in terms of how we visually support the user, if that makes sense. So I think the software settings can make a huge difference. I no longer recommend any software that doesn't have a search. So, and that's because I work a lot in school um, doing consults and I know how difficult it is for people to learn a language system when they are a, um, oftentimes an aid that is not trained in anything but what people train them on in the moment when they walk through the door. Um, so they're now trying to figure out how to read our kiddo or adult with Rhett and at the same time learn a software system. Now y'all that have devices as parents know that this is a huge task. 
you know, you're, you don't just exactly sit down with the device and all of a sudden you own it. You know, like you really know where to find things. So that search button is great for parents. It's great for um, grandmas and grandpas. It's great for me. Are you kidding? I'm on these things all the time. And I use the search feature for things that I haven't found before. But think about a school where they're trying to juggle so many things, trying to get to know their system and where they spend, well, except during COVID, but where they spend a great deal of time with your kiddo, a great deal of waking hours. So that setting can make a difference. All right, but let's go on now to access settings in terms of visual accents. And the different softwares that I am going to be talking about are SnapCore and Grid3, and they have very different settings. There are way, way, way more settings in Grid 3 than there are in Snap Core. And there are way more settings in Grid 3 than there are in Communicator. And the ones in um, Snap pretty much mimic what you have in Communicator. So let's take a look at what we're going to take a look at, which is the highlighting button. So what are the options to highlight a button for a kiddo? Now, as kids get more skilled they may want to take this off but i find it to be really helpful um, to be able to use highlighting because even if they're trying to get someplace i can see it recognize it see if that's what they're trying to do um, to honor all of their um, communication so there are options um, the border can be highlighted the, the button can be filled with a color there can be telescoping on um, on grid that kind of draws the eye into the middle of that symbol. You can enlarge a button um, when you look at it. Um, that can help some kids. Um, and, which I didn't mention here, is on grid, and I'll show you this, you can have it, the button highlight two different or three different colors. So it can highlight one color for the child's eye gaze it can highlight another color for somebody who's touching and modeling. And then because I do a lot of remotes, I set it for that same color when I'm clicking on it. Because I'm using, because I'm remote, remotely getting into a device, I'm actually using a, um, a mouse click. I find that to be extremely helpful. So the kiddo can see when I'm doing the highlighting, but when I take videos, of what's going on when I screen capture what's going on or I'm taking videos of what's going on I can tell what is the child's use and what is my use what's my model and I think that's really significant um, especially in schools if we want to run gaze view and just see you know what's going on in the background here um, we really can't tell between a touch and an eye gaze um, so it's really kind of nice. Well, I guess it does just only pick up the eyes, so we can. But we don't see the modeling. That's the issue on, on Gaze Viewer. We don't really see the modeling, so we don't really know. And the sound on that's a little glitchy. Um, it's not very loud, so sometimes it's hard to hear. All right, so you'd have to, like, really crank that puppy up, which would be hard in a classroom. Sleep options. Um, how, how something goes to sleep and who has access to the sleep button. Uh, and I'll talk about that. It's not that I want to take away power from my kids, but when somebody's first learning a device, if they have, and I'm not talking about access to language, I want them to have access to all the language. But a sleep button really helps me as somebody who's modeling, and it really helps the child to stay in the place where I'm modeling, or if I model, and they're still trying to say they're trying to follow me and they hit the wrong thing then it starts to activate so that sleep button under our control can be really helpful in the beginning same with the pin option and a pin option pins the page to where it is so that you can see the child trying to get to a button or you can see them making one like i just worked with this kiddo in france in france in paris and it was really obvious once we started pinning that she goes to a certain place and if the page doesn't flip back, it stays there. You can see her working across the page to get to where we modeled. If I hadn't pinned the page there, I wouldn't know. Now, I don't want to set it so they, autom they don't automatically turn back because that really means they have to learn another navigation piece. They have to use that back button. 
So I would rather just have the control myself over the pin options while we're learning. And again, as they get older, some of my older girls and boys, they could have control of the pin. Maybe they want to pin the page so they have a chance to not make a mistake and get to what they want to say. But in the beginning, that's a lot of uh, processing about like, when do I use the pin and why am I using the pin? So I like to keep that under my control um, to aid their imitation. And I find that pinning and controlling the sleep, I get much more attending to the modeling and I get much more imitation of the modeling. So there we have it. Um, so what we will learn in this lesson is how to put a pin button in Snapcore. Woo, woo, when I found out you could do this, I was like so excited because I have a lot of kids on Snapcore and I have no way to pin a page. And I love my pin in Grid 3. So um, thank you, thank you to a speech therapist out east who um, taught me how to do this. And I am blanking on her name right now, but when I remember it, I'll let you know. Um, how to reset the pin button in grid three. So in grid three, there is a pin button, but there, I didn't realize that it has settings and I should have known it has settings because grid three has so many settings. Why wouldn't they have settings for that? So it was just kind of a Aha, aha, on my part when I found it. And the woman that helped me with the Snapcore pin is Louise Chamberlain. Shout out. Um, I'm gonna we're going to take a look at the highlighting options in Snapcore and the highlighting options in Grid 3. Okay, so here are the, um, here are the rep pages of Snapcore um, that you can download from Page Set Central um, at my Toby Dynamax. So um, the first thing I want to do, I want to show you how to make a pin. And I'm going to put it over here in this side toolbar. So I have to go up to the top to where the um, settings button is. See that little cog wheel with the pencil in it? And click on that because that puts me in edit mode. And I am going to go to page set and into preferences. And it talks about the message bar, and this is the message bar right here. It's located on the left, and it says match page set of seven. I'm going to turn that off because I would like it to have eight rows. I'm going to close this. And now when it has eight rows, it does something peculiar. <laughs> it adds word forms. I don't know why, but it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first... Pull this, see how it pushed the dashboard down? I'm going to pull the dashboard up to here. And oh, thank goodness it's receiving it because sometimes it just doesn't. It, you need to have another button under here in order to get rid of that arrow button. It's a little bit weird and tricky, but okay. Then I'm going to take the Word Forms button and I'm going to click on it so it's activated. I'm going to go all the way over to the right. You see the little eyeball here? I'm going to click on the eyeball so that we can see it. Excellent. Now I'm going to go to the label here, right in this area, and I'm going to make it say pin. Okay. And I'm going to go down here to the spyglass. So I'm moving down to this little spyglass because I would like something that looks like a thumbtack, which I know there is one, and I click on it and say done. Okay. So we're at button, right? We've put our pin in and we look down and we've got this link to word forms with a garbage can sitting here. And we are going to click on the garbage can, go over to the right and click delete. Then underneath that, see where it says add an action? We're going to go, whoops, accidentally click that. I was getting a little click happy. Add an action. And we're going to scroll down to where it says cancel, visit, remain on current page. And that's our action. So now when we go back and we have our board, what I did is I kept the keyboard down and the topics down. I put the pin kind of in the middle. 
So it wasn't disturbing them too much in what they were used to doing. Now, the interesting thing is, is Snap views verbs as being a total page set. So once I pin it, I can hit talk, talk. it'll stay, watch, watch, it'll stay, hold, it'll hold. stay. But if I also go to common, because it's viewing this as a total page set, sound, it will stay here also. Mick. I can go to body, bathe, bathe. it's going to stay here. Choke. I can go to moving. Moving. It's going to stay. Jump. Because it's pinned. And that's a total page set. And then I just click back. Let's say go to core words. I go to verbs again. It's off. Try. So by moving out of that page set, I couldn't just move back a page to another verb. I had to move out of that page set. It turns it off. Same thing for little words. Oh man, I love it in little words because, and this is not, I have mine edited so that they're all showing, but um, it already had a pin, so I had to show you one that wasn't edited. So I um, I use because a because. lot. I've been trying to get kids to expand their utterances. And so we're talking about because and but, but. a lot without laughing. So because, because. I'm not, not, because I'm not happy. I'm not feeling happy about this. Happy. So because I can stay there, I can combine those little words. But now that I've gone away from it, that it flips back. The other place that I found it really helpful if you're using the RET pages, the pages developed for kids with RET, is when you're in these good descriptors and I'm modeling and I'm saying, you know what? I don't I think this is really a safe way to go. Safe. If I haven't pinned it, it goes away. So then I have to go back if I want them to do any kind of imitation of what I'm doing. So it just holds me in a position much, much better. Um, and again, all you do is you go back and now it's not there anymore. I'm on good descriptors and it's gonna flip Interesting. out. Interesting. So for them, if they go up there, on, if they go there on their own accord, they can go there, say it and come on back. But when I'm modeling and when we understand the value of modeling and the value of trying to get them to expand and to link their thoughts causally because or to negate their thought, you know, I like that. But, you know, how do we do that if we can't have a little bit of stick in here? And I think the younger the user, and I don't mean age wise, I mean in experience, the more this is important. Okay, so now let's take a look at the highlighting features since we did the pin. So we would go again back up to that top edit button. We go down to the user because these are settings that are particular to the user. We are using an access, access method of gaze interaction and that's where we pick our dwell also. But the only gaze feedback I get in SNAP is a um, is a dot so I can have a shrinking dot I can have a clock where it goes around like a clock or I can or it could be just invisible I can have no highlighting so I'm going to make mine the shrinking dot I'm going to make it red because it's practically the only thing that's going to show up on these wildly colored buttons would be red and now let me pick up my device because I'm doing this really through splash top so that you can see, because I don't have eye gaze obviously on my um, computer. So I'm going to click done. And now you can see what that highlighting looks Lacking. like. So yeah. I can see where yeah. somebody would be trying to look maybe, but not I, all the way. You see how I can, I'm yeah. just trying to move my head really fast yeah. so that they can see where they're trying to get to. But that Wait. is the highlighting that you're going to get in um, Snap plus core. Those are the only visual kinds of um, options that you have. Um, you certainly could um, go in and change backgrounds. Um, you certainly cannot go in and use um, like symbol sticks which don't have as much color. Um, I find that to be this to be difficult for kids that have visual processing issues where you've got colored backgrounds and colored symbols both. It's a bit visually overwhelming, um, but for a lot of, you know, for the for the run of the mill visual kids, it's probably not going to make much of a difference.
but like I said, the only um, option you have is that highlighting, and I would suggest highly to put it on because I think it really helps you see where they're trying to get to. And if for some reason the dwell is set ridiculously high, you know, like a 1200, you know, 1200, which is over a second, which is really hard to hold, um, then you might see things lighting up but never speaking. You can use that to help you back down that eye gaze dwell. And while we're at it, no, we don't set goals as to increase their dwell time. Um, I think dwell time is like a fingerprint. You know, some kids need a long dwell time because they're like, their eyes are like, bing, 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 all over the place. Other kids have a really fast um, eye gaze, really accurate, fast. And if you make it too long, they give up. So that's something to really keep in mind. And you might even adjust it if after somebody's had a seizure, make it a little bit faster for them. So a shorter dwell so they can be more successful than bring it back up. So I always think of dwell as being a range. Um, I know at night when my eyes are tired, I probably need a much shorter dwell than I do um, right now. So um, that is snap. Okay, so let's take a look at settings in grid. And I'm using grid 30, but if I were using grid fit, I mean, I'm using grid super core 30. If I was using super core 50, if I was using Beeline, if I was using word power, if I were using any of grid products, I would have pretty much the very same access methods and access settings. So if you look over here at the top, um, way at the top, there's these three lines to the left. That's where I can get into my um, editing. And so once I'm in editing, um, if you notice, mine looks a little different. My grids look a little different than those of you who are familiar. I changed the background. So when you go into editing, so sorry. When you go into editing, you're going to see at the top grid set, home, style, layout, grid. When you click on grid, you can see background. It comes with this white background, which white is very hard on the eyes, really hard on the eyes. And it also makes everything really washed out without a lot of separation. Some of my kids need a black background. They need that kind of really distinct I prefer even this blue or this kind of dusky blue. Either one of those I think can be good for kids with visual processing issues or any kid. I would not have anybody have this. I find that to be difficult for my eyes. I kind of like this one for myself, but they may need more contrast and need this one. I only use black for kids where it says in their reports they need everything off a of black background um, on their CVI reports. Okay, so that's the grid set. Now, in terms of what we can do to help visually there, we're going to go into finish editing or we can go over here to get to settings. So it's over here when you're in edit or if I finish editing, show you both places, I go into those three little lines and there it says settings. And we're going to look at a couple of settings, but we're going to look at the access, okay, access settings. And if you notice, there's pointer settings, there's touch settings, and there's eye gaze settings. So we have settings for all of those independent of each other, which is great because the kiddo can tell what I'm modeling. I can tell what I'm modeling versus what they're saying. If I take videos, it's really easy in the video for other practitioners or for teaching purposes to see what am I modeling and what are they saying. Um, and I think it makes it more clear for the kiddo. I tend to make the pointer, I, well, I always make the pointer and the touch the same because the, that's the input coming from the outside, coming from the modeler. And I make the eye gaze a different color that's coming from the kiddo or the adult. Now, is there an advantage to, to plugging in a mouse and modeling with a mouse? Yeah, there actually is. And we have to remember that the ease of this isn't for us. The ease of it is for them. Um, and the only reason I learned this is I'm doing so many remote sessions. I'm using a mouse. And when I just even hover over what's going on using a mouse, I just hover over it. It lights up. I don't have to click. So I can say, oh man, I think that's really good. You know, what do you think? And for kids where it's too much to hear my voice and maybe the device's voice, 
or I want to do it a few times. I think that's good, good, good. Now, the only place things don't light up is when you're in the gray matter, so you have to be a little bit careful. But you can draw kids' attention to it pretty quickly. So let's go back to settings and see how we set those settings. So we're in settings. Here's pointer. I typically set my, well, I set my pointer click to activate. And I just want my color, my cell, to just have a color cell background. I want the whole cell to have a background, not just the border like you have in Snap, but the whole fill. I want the whole thing to fill. If you think magnification can help, you can set it to magnify. And now when I, when I point to it, it comes out at kids. Now, I actually taught um, Courtney how to do this, and she used it for one of her kiddos who was not, I repeat, not really paying any attention to her device. And that was what unlocked it. So again, it's got this um, magnification, um, and that, um, that can be helpful for some kids. I'm just going to have this be color cell background. Click to activate. Computer control, I've got that off just so it doesn't muck up the waters. And I'm going to go back, and I'm going to make sure my touch matches. So my touch is going to color the cell background. It says activate the last item touch, which is perfect. I don't want it to activate just the first one. I don't want to have to have to hold and touch. And I'm going to make it pink. Now, there is no pink that looks like this color. Their colors are a little drab for drawing people's eye attention to it. So I tend to take a color and I say, I am going to, whoops, I get on the color. I'm going to adjust the color. And then I start dragging things around until I get to the color I really want. Like that nice bright, ah, there it is, pink. And you can keep track of what the number is and type that in and then you'll always get to it. Or keep track of the hue and you'll always get to it. So I pretty much always take a screenshot of my colors when I do them so then I don't forget when I'm doing the next one, which would be um, the touch. So I want the touch. There's my screenshot. I want the touch and the... Um, Mag and the mouse action, both touch and click, to be um, the same. So both the pointer and the touch to be the same. I ask kids, before I ever do mine, I ask kids what they would like. So here's your calibration. Here's our activation. And I go dwell to click on the left, and I do contracting iris. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I'm done. And then I color the cell background. And again, this green was not a green that was there. I just dragged things around until it showed up this kind of green. So we'll take a look at that um, setting. Do you see how that, that circle is pulling your eyes kind of in, right in to the middle? I have found that for my kids with CVI or more severe visual processing, that that has helped them to kind of like stay on the button. Like, okay, I'm, I want this button. Now I'm going to stay here because it's kind of pulling my eyes into the center. Um, so that, um, that, those are wonderful settings that you can use to really enhance both the background so that it stands out more. The ability to use a mouse and have it show up and highlight a different color than the eye gaze so you can tell them apart. And just remember that you can, when you're in your settings, you can always decide that for the eye gaze, you also might want it to um, expand, to magnify. Okay, now there are two other things in um, Grid. So Grid comes with a pin. You don't have to create a pin. It's there. I've done some editing so that every page has a pin and it has a rest button. So I'm going to go into Edit and I'm going to show you some settings here. I love that they make cell accessibility 
give you a lot of variety. So I know in schools it's really hard when kids throw a lot up here and people forget to delete and then the kid hits it and then you've got this stream and everybody in the classroom is laughing. And you know, that's not really a good thing in an inclusion cash classroom. So I tend to make the accessibility to this only pointer in touch. You know, if when they get to a point where they're throwing a whole sentence up there and they want it to speak, I might put the speak button back here and maybe take off the jump back. Um, but that just random like running off of a lot of words, um, I don't think it really helps them in the long run because what happens is I see kids that when I model and the words go up there, they go hit that instead of doing it themselves. And that to me is a real detriment. They need to be modeling what we're saying, not stealing our words up here and saying them as if as if they did it. And not from an honesty point. I mean, that's just from an ease of access point for them. But it doesn't teach them to do what it is that we're trying to get them to do. It's counterproductive. The rest button is the same way. I, in the beginning, and I spoke to this a little bit before, I would like to have access to that by touch and pointer only. I don't want them putting themselves to sleep. Well, I don't really mind that as much as I don't want themselves. I don't want them waking it up when I'm trying to model. So I do that. Now, just so you know, on the original version of Grid, so let me go back, finish, and I'm going to show you this on an original Grid super course so you can see. So let me go to Grid Explorer, and there's my super course that I haven't touched. So you can see this. When we go to the sleep button that we want to fix, do you see how it says it rests the eye gaze, rests the pointer, rests the switches? So now if I make it only pointer and touch, which I can do, when I touch it to rest it for the kid, it's also going to rest my pointer action and my switches. Now, I don't need switches, and I certainly don't want it to rest my pointer because the very reason I am doing that is because I want to be able to model while it's on rest. That means I need to do something about this rest button on all the pages. So I click on it like it is here. I copy it. I go to Grid Set. And it shows you every single page that's in the entire grid set. And unfortunately, you have to go one at a time. So I go here, I click on the rest, and I hit paste. Oh, I'm on, so sorry. So sorry, I'm on remote. I keep forgetting I can't use my keyboard. All right, so look, now it only rests only rests the eye gaze. It doesn't rest the rest of it, which would be counterproductive. So let's remember that. So that's how I would do it to get it on all the pages. But there's another change I would make, and that is on the pinning. Now, on SuperCore 30 as it comes, it doesn't have a pin. <laughs> So that's why I adapted SuperCore 30. I wanted a pin on every page. But we have the same, not but, but it's great that we have the same options. Every single button, can we can have those accessibility options. So I would like to be in charge of that button. I would like to say pointer and touch only. And instead of it being a toggle, and I'm going to show you what toggle means. Any of you using grid, if you have issue with the pin button. So if I go here to actions and I see that it's changed color and I click it to change color, I'm thinking I'm pinned and I am, which is great. And then I can go back and it turns off. But I can't tell you the number of times where now I'm going to pin here and now it's going to make a liar out of me. It's staying, but it's staying and sometimes you forget if it's on or if it's off and you think you have it staying there and it's not. So if let's say I click it and then I go someplace, 
and I click it again, now it's, it's behaving just beautifully, which it never does when it's on my device. But this is what I do to make sure. I go to edit. People have used this. I, I do this all the time and it screws up for me. So instead of it toggling between on or off, which can be confusing in the moment, first of all, I have it have the accessibility only pointer and touch. But I changed the toggle to just self-closing is off. So if I've changed the stay here, I can then hit my shift key. So I would plug in a computer and I would hit my rest key because I also changed my rest key. And see, it's going to gather up all those because it is a grid. And that's fine because I'm also making, so here's my changes I've made. I've made stay here only accessible to me. I've made the, the little chat bar only accessible to me, not to eye gaze, and I'm making the rest button only accessible to me. So I'm gonna have to take this, hit my shift key, this and this. Copy, go to grid set. And now I just paste. And when I paste, oh I, don't, oh, I know what happened. I'm sorry. No, I don't. So when I paste, I'll explain to you what I did. I had to make the home page slightly different so it has a magic wand. So I would not, I would have to do that page individually on my version. I don't know what version you're running. I don't know how you've done it. But by the time I get to the second pages, the second pages are all the same. And I put my clicker here and I paste. And now, it's self-closing, garbage stays the same, this has the accessibility I want, and this has the accessibility I want. So it just makes it a little easier. I go back to the grid set, and unfortunately you do have to do every one at a time, like I said. But I start here, because that's where my paste is gonna begin, and I paste. Okay, I can check if I want to, if I get a little nervous, but it's self-closing is off, garbage is the same, this accessibility has changed, and this accessibility has changed. So we have, learned a couple things here. One is that, let's go back to our grid set, finish editing. One thing is that we can set the eye gaze to telescope and have a, a different colored background depending on what the kid, kiddo or adult in their reports is most attracted to or what they like. I give kids a, ch I give kids a choice. But also, I can hover over it and my mouse will light it up or I can click and it will light up. Or I can touch and it will light up. And I hold my touch a little while so it lights up, right? I hold it. I'm also looking at my device so it's kind of giving me both. I'm like, I'm gonna try not to look at it. There we go. So I can hold it and it'll light up and then it'll, it'll play. But the other thing is that I can change the stay here button, the pin button, so that it's only accessible to me and I can take it off the toggle and make it just be page off. So I go to describe, stay here. I jump back and it's off. I go to those pages and it doesn't stay on. And now I'm back. I can make the text window non-accessible via eye gaze, which I think is helpful. Um, I used to think it was great because kids could hear all the things they could say and then I realized my kids were taking my modeling and they were using that bar instead of doing their own modeling. And since I took that away, they have made much more growth in their language um, development on the device. Rest also, I set that so it's accessible to me. So I can put it on rest. I take it off of pause, the switches pause, the pointing, and I can get in and I can do some modeling. Take it off rest and now they have access to follow the model. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, 
And you may have to watch it a few times to kind of understand what I'm doing and where we're going. So um, what we learned, and, and hopefully um, you'll play it back so that you can really figure out how to do it, um, is we learned how to put a pin button in Snap Core, which is a huge bonus for a lot of my kids that um, and adults that are on Snap Core um, because it came with the Toby. Um, and we need some ways to kind of help them um, operate a little bit better in that arena. Um, how to reset the pin button in grid three. So we're looking at um, making it only accessible to a touch user so that um, the kids can't take it off pin when we're trying to keep them in a place, but also to change it from that toggle, which can be annoying. It didn't show up as annoying when I was doing it, but oh my gosh, that's probably the one thing I get the most complaints about other than in Snap Core that it's hard to get that um, on the left hand side, that toolbar um, to change buttons because uh, when things get down below to try and get rid of that arrow. Um, we looked at highlighting options in Snap Core. There aren't that many, but I showed you how you could change them. And then we looked at all the highlighting options in Grid 3 and the differentiation between touch, um, click, and eye gaze. Um, so hopefully um, that was helpful. And if you have any questions, you can contact me at the email below. So bye. Have a great day.